everyone, and welcome to the TNT Show. I'm John Drummond, and I'm your host for the next 60 minutes. Thanks for joining us on Day Live. Uh, the TNT Show is proud to say that we have completed and broadcast over 110 shows. And you can catch us on Facebook, on YouTube, on TikTok. You'll see all the platforms on the screen. And, of course, on YouTube, you can access all the previous shows. So if you're up for it, you can go through 109 shows, <laughs> if that's your bag. I need to, before I go on, to give you a sincere apology for the fact that we've been off air. Uh, partly, it was summer holidays, and we're all entitled to summer holidays. I mean, Boris Johnson, even on summer holidays, when he's supposed to be prime minister. Um, and we had a break, and then just before and after the break, we were smitten by COVID. So taking all these things into account, uh, it's a major tribute to the production team that were back on air tonight, and I thank everyone involved in doing that. Uh, you may find, by the way, during tonight's broadcast that there's a bit of an echo on the line, and also uh, my image might go a little bit darker because I'm using a studio in Portugal, and uh, I'm using the uh, ambient light from outside, and, and that may vary as the, as the night goes on. So these apologies to, off to one side. I'm going to do something we've never done before. I'm going to react to a warning we made a few months ago, and it's this. British democracy has become an oxymoron. Uh, an oxymoron is a contradiction in terms, a bit like uh, business ethics. Uh, it's in every sense uh, a, a contradiction. Uh, you know, we have a ramshackle UK constitution that was bound to fall apart if it was put under sufficient stress and it just took somebody like Boris Johnson to make it incapable of restraining a government prepared to cast aside the conventions on which it rests. In other words, it was based on notions. It was based on uh, statements, but not these statements weren't endorsed. Uh, I mean, there was no document, for example, put to the people, and the people said, this is our constitution. And, for example, there's nobody in the UK parliament anywhere who is under any obligation to uphold the, the, the British constitution. Uh, nobody, for example, like in the United States, swears to uphold, uh, preserve and protect the constitution. They just don't do it. They say they're going to preserve a monarchy, they're going to say, do this and do that, but they're not going to preserve a constitution because it doesn't exist, except in, as a figment. Anyway, all that aside, tonight we're taking a close look at civil rights in Scotland, because if you think about it, democracy, it's a key civil right but there are many others. And we'll be discussing those top topics with our special guests, Nori Hunter and Bill Cruikshank. Uh, and, and they are the centerpiece of the Scottish civil rights movement. And you'll find them on Twitter if you need uh, further background detail. And before we proceed, let me just reassure you that the TNT show is entirely free. Of course, it's live. So if you have no license, it's not a problem. And we'll be taking your questions live. So if you want to speak to Nori and Bill about the SCRM, or anything else for that matter, you'll find the details on the screen and we warmly welcome uh, your uh, questions and thoughts. Now, to our special guests. Hello, Nori and Bill. Thanks for joining us. How are you? Nori first, please. Uh, Nori's muted. Yeah, I've got Sorry, Nori, we can't hear you. Um, is that better? Oh, you're back with us. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm in the garage. I was just saying I'm in the garage, um, the, the curled on radio garage. Uh, and if I'm looking a bit peely wally, it's because the light's coming in. But actually, I'm just peely wally anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to the show and welcome to you too, Bill. How are you? Thank you. Very well, John. Yourself? Very good. Thank you. Where, where are you speaking to us from tonight? I'm speaking to you from the Highlands. Oh, there we are. Beautiful How, area. How high up in the Highlands are you? Well, pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very well. Yeah, very high. That's a politician's Jersey. answer. Where exactly you you joining us from? Uh, Aberdeenshire. Aberdeenshire, great, terrific. Yeah. And Nori, where are you based? Uh, Hamilton. The oh, yeah. 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 Now this is a pan-European broadcast. How about that? <laughs> and you're, yeah. where are you, John? Tell us where you are. I'm in Pria de Luge. <laughs> Yeah, nice. uh, that's Pria de Luge is near La Gauche. Um, yeah, it's, it's in the Algarve. Yeah. And that also accounts for my 
somewhat uh, interesting skin colour. <laughs> so let's let's talk about SCRM. Uh, why is it necessary? Why why is what you guys are doing necessary? Um, well, I'll go first, Willer. Um, SCRM, the, Scot the Scottish Civil Rights Movement, is necessary because uh, we're going through uh, a, a bit of a crisis and we need a revolution. And I don't want to be um, too startling with that fact. I think we do. There's people dying because they can't heat or eat. Um, and we need a new, a new movement. We need something that's um, not through the same old systems of uh, political parties. Because as we've seen, um, even yesterday, with Truss and uh, Sunak, they're talking about the independence campaign as if it belongs to the SNP or it belongs to Nicola Sturgeon. And we're here to say, wait a minute here. We're wanting a voice in this. We're wanting to be seen about this. It's about us. We want to be heard and we want to be seen because this is our future and we want a stake in it. And I think that is why the Scottish Civil Rights Movement has taken off. Um, and Bill will probably allude to this uh, on his Twitter page and what he's doing over there. And I think that is why the Scottish no, absolutely phenomenal. That's why we're, we're here tonight talking about it. When you say phenomenal, give us a... Size it for us. What are we talking about? Um, uh, Bill's got, I've got a big following on Twitter, so is Bill. Um, and honestly, uh, everybody's downloading the avatar to put on their web, their um, their uh, Twitter page. It's, um, I'm getting on Caledon Radio, people are asking me more and more about it. Um, I'm saying, look, um, we're at the early, early stages. We're writing out some uh, a paradigm, we're writing out some um, basic tenets of what the civil rights movement will be. Okay. Um, a lot of people are saying, can we tie it in with a constitution? Um, I says, well, we haven't got a constitution. That's why we're going to the street with a civil rights movement. But we could influence those in power by our, our street presence and our, our, uh, um, our development of the SCRM. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they can look and see what the people are wanting from the ground up, because I think that's missing okay. the debate today. Okay. Okay. Bill, uh, we, we, a lot of us saw the uh, the the... What was happening in Perth last night, and the media coverage of that wasn't altogether in line with the experiences of the people who attended uh, the protesters. I mean, but isn't that a danger when you protest on the streets uh, about civil rights or anything else for that matter? That the media will construe whatever you do as being negative rather than positive. That's one of the risks, uh, John. Uh, having been an activist uh, in the SNP for many, many years, there are there are elements within British society or British security forces forces who will cause problems. There's no doubt about it. Now, I was online last night and I was watching what was going on. Um, there was an organisation there which was uh, prescribed by the SNP, I believe, about forty years ago. Uh, there were people demonstrating and breaking the barrier through uh, from a far left political party. I don't believe for a minute that those people were actually socialists, uh, certainly not all of them. Um, so there are dangers and the British state will use any protest movement to uh, demean uh, Black in the name of uh, independence movements. They've done it everywhere. The, the British have been in every colony. India, Ireland. Now, the problem with that is, if we, I'd like to go back to what Norrie was saying there, there's a, a vacuum here in Scotland today. We are in a very, very serious democratic or undemocratic situation. We have been told by the leaders of the Tory party that we will not be allowed to hold an independence referendum. Now, the Scottish Government have taken, taken the British Government to the Supreme Court on democracy in Scotland that rests on that decision. And that is why I and Norrie and some others have decided that enough's enough. We have decided that, that the very, if you Google civil rights, you will find that the top, the top civil right in any society is the right to vote. Now, Scotland at the moment has been denied that right. And the Tories and the Labour Party and the Lib Dems are all saying it's Nicola Sturgeon's referendum. 
It's not. It's the people of Scotland's referendum who voted for let, it and over the Let me just stop you for a second. There, Sorry, John. Yeah. In what way have you been denied the right to vote? Well, when I've been did told, that happen? I, I'm be, I've been told oh. through the television that next year the proposed referendum that Nicola Sturgeon is proposing to hold will not happen. I am being denied the right to vote on my future, my country's future. Uh, well, what what they said is that they wouldn't allow a referendum. Yeah. But Nicholas Judge has said if that turns out to be the case, as I understand it, she will regard the next UK general election as a referendum. Well, that's got its own problems, as we all know. Uh, and then Anna Sarver, Mr. Starmer, they've all come out and said you can't have a plebiscite referendum. They are, in fact, they're wrong. The 1918 Irish general election was a, ref a plebiscite general election in Ireland, and it led to 26 of the 32 counties in Ireland becoming independent. So, okay, I, think I think you can take your point, but uh, and I just need to challenge you a bit further. You said you were denying, you've been denying your right to vote, but what you've just described is you exercising your right to vote, i.e., there would be a plebiscite uh, general election and you would vote. So yes, you're, not being denied your, you're not being denied your right to vote. The, no, the problem there, John, is, and it's, it's the, the really difficult problem, if we're told by the authorities or the, the British government, Labour Party, etc., that we cannot hold a plebiscite, ref, a plebiscite general election, that's been denied, we're, then we have been denied that right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a problem here. There's a ba major, basically, what we're going up, up against here is the British state providing stumbling blocks to the people of Scotland voting. Now, personally, I prefer a referendum because the plebiscite general election will cause its own problems and the British state will produce problems to do that. They are very good at inventing difficulties for nations who are trying to break free from the UK. I understand that. But yeah. it doesn't, isn't all of the stuff that Liz Truss is talking about and I've noticed she, she hasn't had sufficient uh, nous to use the terminology that Johnson uses. Johnson never says never. There isn't, there isn't one uh, half-decent politician in the world who uses the word always or the word never. Mm -hmm. And the reason they, don't, they avoid these words is because they come and bite you in the rear end. Mm -hmm. Inevitably, they bite you in the rear end mm -hmm. because people then cast it up to you when you do attempt to be flexible. And you, everybody has to become flexible. It's called real politic. As soon as you're in power, you have to make decisions. And in order to get those decisions enacted, you have to take people with you, which, well, which is fascinating because it's exactly what you guys are proposing. That's true for all politicians as well. They may say, oh, look, I've been elected, and maybe Nori and Bill weren't elected. But at the end of the day, just like you, they have to take people with them. They just can't stand up in a soapbox and say, I'm going to do this. Uh, particularly if, if the, the public mood is, is completely opposed to it. So at some stage, I suspect Liz Truss and Rishi, if he's become uh, Prime Minister, will have to recant. Uh, now, obviously, they're not going to do it in an open and, and overt way. They'll kind of find some way. They'll probably call you and say, look, would you like to <laughs> take the chance to, to publicise the SCR? I don't know what they'll do. Uh, but the reality is that they'll do something to soften the, 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 that attitude because it, it's not it's not sustainable. Uh, what you guys, it seems to me what you guys are doing is 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 utterly logical. Well, can I come in here, um, John? Um, the, the, you just said a couple of things there um, that is quite important to this debate. Um, you're saying that um, people. No, I lost you again. Sorry, Nori, we've lost you. Now you've switched off. Am I back? You're back now. Good. Right. Um, Rishi Sunak last night said that, um, he says, Scotland and England are joined by an, an agreement, a treaty, but it's not the right time to review it. It's just not the right time. Never said. No, you've been switched off again, Nori. Something is switching off your mic. This is interesting. 
Sorry, Bill, do you want to carry yeah. on with that? Uh, actually, John, yeah, I have very great concerns about the present um, candidates, if you like, for the, the premiership. And I remember reading Ken Clark about three or four years back, describing the present basically cabal who have taken over the Tory party as being right-wing English nationalists. Now, I take on board what you said about less trust and people having to recant the foolishness of uh, saying never. The problem, I believe, at the heart of the Tory party now is there is a very extreme right-wing ideology. Now, that's one of my greatest fears that Scotland is going to be caught up with this right-wing ideology. I could use another word to describe it, and I believe that would be in context. But well, I, I used I used that word in the Sunday National two weeks ago. Yeah, it begins with that. We're we're in a very serious, precarious, dangerous democratic situation in Scotland, and I think that what Nori said earlier about being people led. There are various people in various in all the parties who are in favour of the British Constitution and staying in the UK, and I'm including the SNP there because. When I joined away back in 68, I was told there was plants and all sorts of British agents in the SNP. So I would like to get across to people tonight the seriousness of the situation. We must have a people led. We must get back Nicola Sturgeon and what she says. It's not her referendum. It's the people of Scotland's referendum. I think that's the most important thing to get across tonight. How we go about it is uh, well, we'll try our best to, to enact that and action it. Can I come back in there, John? Uh, just Please. a bit about what happened. Um, was, Rishi Sunak acknowledges that there's a treaty um, between Scotland and England. Um, Liz Truss doesn't. Um, she's saying never. Um, you know, the, we've all heard what she said about Nicola Sturgeon. Um, it just it, it doesn't bear repeating. Anyway, it's one of those things where the um, Westminster bubble talk to each other and they don't get right down to the coal face where the people are. The citizens' rights movement is to get us that place on the the um on the on, on, in the, the impressions of people so that they can come and join us and go, do you know what? She doesn't speak for me. But then how do I get that through to Nicola Sturgeon? Well you come through to the grassroots of a new movement called the civil rights movement. Okay. And we're up against a new, this is a bespoke system, uh, John. Okay. This is something, we're against a, a capitalist system here that's never been seen before. It's capitalism that drives the Tory party. It's capitalism that drives austerity. It's capitalism that drives inflation up. And we're at the back end of that. We're at the butt end of that at the bottom. Well, I'm sorry, but the meek shall inherit the earth. We're going to have to do something about this. We've got to rely on ourselves and nobody else. Okay, We've got so, so what, is, what is your, let's examine that for a second, if we may, Dory and Bill. What is your USP? I mean, for example, would you, would you, would you be happy to have Tories who are not unionists in the, in the SCRM? I, anyone that believes in democracy and civil rights is welcome. Okay. I don't care who, where they come from, because anyone yeah. with that tenant um, uh, is after what we're after. It's just that freedom of um, expression, that um, that stage to promote your cause a bit further. But earlier on, you said that um, we're up against it. Um, we're up against dirty tricks and it'll get very fierce. I'll tell you this, John, the closer we come to independence, the fiercer it'll become. Of but course. Don't I just, I just, it's, but it just seems... Not, it just, hold on. We don't fight fire with fire. I understand. We, uh, that's uh, madness. That is absolute madness. But what we do is Gandhi style, if you like, Take it to the bottom and do it quietly, and then okay. include everybody. Okay. So you've pinned your colours fairly firmly to the mast of saying you don't subscribe to capitalism. What happens if somebody approaches you and say, "You know, Nori, I, comp I completely disagree with your views on capitalism, mm -hmm. uh, but I want, for democratic reasons, to support the Scottish civil rights movement." Mm -hmm. what, what would your answer be to that person? I would say, um, where are you right now? What's your standing in life? Um, can you pay your bills? Um, are you worried about the future? Um, are you worried about the climate? Are you worried about everything? That um, yeah. and my, answer, my answer might be, yes, Nori, I have thought about all those things, and I completely disagree with you uh, on uh, your take that capitalism is the root of all evil, which it sounds to be like <laughs> what you're saying. Um, no, no. Uh, but what I think, what no. I rather think, is that the lack of democracy is the root of all evil. 
So can I support you, even though I, I'm a firm believer in capitalism? What I'm talking about, John, is capitalism in itself isn't a, a, an evil thing. It's those that get in charge of capitalism that um, take it to another level. I'm okay. talking about this capitalist modernity. We're in this, um, even, it doesn't matter whereabouts in the world you are today. Uh, there's people suffering because people have got more money and power than they have. And you've got people in, um, in different countries getting their trees cut down. Kids are um, digging for lithium for the batteries for our phone. Mm -hmm. um, all over the planet. Um, people have um, have got their struggles. We're a we're a rich country. We're an intelligent country. Yeah. It's not beneath us to get together as a group of peoples. And okay, okay, I understand that you're opposed to capitalism. But no, I go back, I go back to my myth, I go back to my mythical person who comes to you and or Bill and says, I, I'm I, I'm I'm a capitalist uh, and I don't believe in any of the things you just said, but I do believe in democracy. I, do, I, I, I find the anti-democratic nature of what I'm seeing right about me is it, so great that I want to join your group. What well, the, your thing, answer the thing, John, is capitalism isn't one big, huge uh, genetic thing. It's, it can be broken down into different um, areas of capitalism. You could have a small uh, um, uh, scales capitalism. You could have... They lost you again. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're back now. So, now we lost you again. John, can I come in here? Um, Please, Bill. I, I, would, I would welcome anyone, anyone into the SCRM, no okay. matter their colour, religion, creed, politics, anyone. Because you're right, what the basic tenet of this whole um, idea is democracy. And people, the people of Scotland are being denied their chance to vote on their own future. Okay. And that's a terrifying prospect for me anyway and I think for probably all self-respecting Scots there will always be a small minority who will go along and support the union no matter what yeah. but we have to have a broad band a broad church if you like whereby the basic underpinning of this movement is the right to vote on your own future the right to vote and that comes number one in the five major civil rights, we look at it all over the world, uh, in America, Northern Ireland, okay. South Africa, the right to vote is fundamental to human rights and civil rights. So, sorry, we lost you for a bit there, Nori, but Bill was rather eloquently explaining that he believes in a broad church and he's not fussed if somebody's a capitalist or not, or a communist or whatever. Would you, would you take the same view? I would, um, but I'm, all I'm saying is the the main um, uh, instigator against modern democracy is a capitalist modernity. Now that is uh, affecting us everywhere in the planet, and it's affecting us in Scotland. And as Bill says, if we lose that right to vote, which we all, if we vote for a party that um, uh, can't deliver on its mandate that we gave it, well, what kind of democracy do we have? Um, we want to we want to take to the streets. We want to get um, in, in halls and clubs and towns all over the city uh, and all over the country um, to tell people that this isn't good enough. We need to have a system of governing society from the bottom up, John. Mm -hmm. I'm fed up. We've got a claim of right. We elect those people. We elect those people. They are under our charge, not the other way around. And that's where our civil rights is okay. being. Let's, let's, let's say that your movement proposed that the Westminster, all the Scottish National Party MPs at Westminster ought to withdraw. From would, Westminster. That, would that be acceptable to you? Um, it's a protest. I mean, you, I, you talked about protest. That would be a protest. Um, I'm not, it's not just protest. Um, we have to get dialogue and we have to discuss and we have to make plans to go forward with a movement. It's not just about protesting. It's about what you're going to put in place. It's what how it differs from before. What are we missing in our lives in Scotland? What are we missing? And we believe, and I think a lot of Scots do as well, we're fed up, John, hearing this once in a generation thing. Um, now is not the time. Fobbing us off with rubbish. We're in charge. We vote for you. The claim of right will tell you that. Um, and if you try and meddle with that, you're going to meddle with the rest, all of us, not just a few of us. Mm -hmm. But then what, what happens if uh, Bliss Trust or Rishi follow through in their threat to effectively emasculate the Scottish Parliament because it's not doing what they wanted to do? 
Well, um, uh, do you think that will strengthen your movement? I think it would. I think it would. I think there's more and more ordinary people looking at those two and going. Well, we we'll, we'll lost you again. Yeah. I'll come in then, John. Please. Um, there's, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that um, we are, as I said earlier, we're in a very serious situation. Um, I, I, I back Nori, what, what he was saying there about being people led. Um, it's one of these situations where if we don't take the the bull by the horns, if you like, people are literally going to die this winter. And I think mm -hmm. that it was the the crisis of the union crisis, if you like to call it that, the cost of living crisis, but it's actually yeah. a crisis of the union which has cost. Or has has uh, caused the cost of living crisis. We are an energy rich country. We are exporting electricity to England. We're talking about taking our water in a, a Boris Great Canal, or something like this. And, uh, the, 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 it's madness. We've got uh, the North Sea now. I'm I'm like with Nori on the, the green side of things. Um, I'd like to see fossil fuels slowly and uh, a, a proper transition being uh, the future. Uh, being done away with, but at the moment, the people's lives must come first. And if we, the Scottish people ourselves, don't do something about it, we are going to be in a very serious situation in the next year or so. In fact, we're entering the period this autumn, winter, where people are going to die, and yeah. people are sitting, yeah. elderly folk are wondering whether they can heat or eat. It's a shocking situation to be in. We should never have been in this situation, but that could be. That's for a number of reasons. Um, okay. People believed the lies of Better Together yeah. eight years ago. It was uh, well uh, presented. They had the British state behind of, them. You know? Thanks, Bill. I think a lot of people listening to you uh, and to Nori will probably be nodding their heads and saying, well, these guys make a lot of sense to me. I mean, they're saying like some things so. I'm thinking. I would hope so. Yeah. Uh, I suspect they probably are. But at the same time, you, we live in a, a, a particular uh, political reality, which is that uh, the authority of the state is vested in, in the majority party in the House of Commons. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's what the convention says. Mm -hmm. The head of state is obliged to agree that the leader of the majority party who enjoys the confidence of the House may become prime minister. That's what the convention says. Mm -hmm. It's never ever been revoked without causing a revolution. Um, yeah, but John, we're not talking about um, what what the Tory Party or the Westminster Party are doing. We're talking about up here in Scotland, uh, our democratic rights. People coming up here and flying visits, telling us what we can and cannot do. I'll get back to this basic tenant: we are the people who elect them. We want results. We want them to do as what we ask them to do. And if we ask them to get us a referendum on a, 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 a independence, that's what we deserve and that's what we want. For somebody to come and say, well, no, you're not getting it, that's a breach of democracy. Well, it, it, you, you, you can say that, and I might well agree with you. But the, <laughs> but the reality is, the reality is, for most people in the South, what they believe is that, and again, you, you can. You could claim that this was it's a nonsense, and, and again, I would agree with you. But when I look at the fundamentals of the views in the South, uh -huh. when they consider this question at all, they are fully bought into the whole idea of once in a generation. Mm -hmm. Now, in Scotland, that was regarded by many people as an aside, but it's yep. now become almost wholly writ. So how do you deal with that when the person who can give you most support believes that you you agreed that it was a once in a generation referendum how do you deal with that that's a question from ashbury stumble tonight right um you know what down south we just heard um um the leader of uh, i can't remember his name um of the rmt he was up in mick lynch. Uh, mick lynch he said it's up to the people of scotland he gets it and people are saying you know if he was the leader of the labor party we really want independence because we're like so like-minded with that guy and what his um, uh, values are. Um, but the problem is that he's not the Labour leader. It's Keir Starmer, who's wanting to take us out of Europe, take us out of Brexit. Quite frankly, John, I don't care what the people down south are thinking about us. Um, you've got George Monbiot, you've got even um, uh, Mick Lynch is saying, it's for the Scottish people. Everybody outside the bubble 
the Westminster bubble know it's about uh, democracy for Scotland. And we just have to, and, and you know, the TV companies, the radio people, the foreign press will not be able to ignore a civil rights movement if it's passive and it's peaceful and it's demanding the rights for its people. It cannot be ignored. So what, what plans have you put in place to, to work with the foreign press in order to pursue that agenda? Can I, can I come in there, John? Please. Yeah, it's, it's the movement is in its very early stages. And, but one of the things we've been discussing is looking at how the international community can help Scotland. Because yeah. I'll, I'll go back to my, my previous point about we are facing the British state, a British state which is in its, basically, and it's in its death throes, and the British establishment know that. We are in a crumbling union, and they, are, they will fight tooth and nail to subject or keep us under subjugation, simply because, not because we are a family, as Liz Trust was going on about yesterday, we're not a family, we are a resource. We are, and for the Labour Party, we are a source of votes, or they think we are, but that's long gone. So my worry is, of a number of worries, of course, but what you're saying about the, the, the once in a generation nonsense is an example of how the British state propaganda, propaganda unit sure. can turn a throwaway phrase like Johnson's oh. I'll die, die in a ditch stuff. Uh, I, 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 you know? I think a lot of people would understand that. But the question I asked with respect okay. was what arrangements have you made uh, to work with the foreign press? Because I, I totally agree with your point. The, the mm -hmm. point that, that Nori and you make is, is, to me, is essentially very sound which is that you have to reach out over when you're doing your work internally. At the same time, if you can have the resource to do it, you need to be talking to people for whom democracy is almost like holy writ. Yes. Yeah. Now, it's got nothing to do with, it's got nothing to do with Westminster or Edinburgh in their minds, but everything to do with a basic civil right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So well, do, you, I mean, do you have affiliations with other civil rights entities, or is that your plan? Yeah. No, do you yes. Uh, can I come in here, Bill? Just to yes, Dory. Tell us about Canada. Yeah. Um, on Caledon Radio, we get we because it's internet radio station. We get around the world, John. People are really interested in what um, is happening in Scotland, and they tune in because they get the BBC over in Canada. And when they tune into Caledon Radio, they get a different uh, opinion of what's happening. So much so that I got invited over to Canada to speak to the Scots Society there. Uh, Highland Society in Antigonish. I went. I'm going over again to speak to the French Society. Uh, the Bavarian Society, all interested in what's happening in Scotland. And do you know what? We've had Danish um, guests on, Icelandic guests on, all saying, what are you doing? Why are you pandering to this? Why are you not going to get your independence? They don't get it. So, and they, we're making um, small, just a weird garage radio station. We're making connections to Iceland, to um, Denmark, to Canada, to the US, Argentina. And these people are looking at us and going, do you know what? you need to do something a bit more. And I says, well, Joe you know what? When Bill um, started putting this thing on the um, out on Twitter, the citizens, the civil civil rights movement, I thought, I need to find out more about that. And when I found it, I thought, this is maybe what we want. I'm not saying it's a panacea, John. I'm just saying it's a method of trying to carry a message to the people more, um, more directly from the ground up and a message back from the people to the people in power. Because well, that's what, what I hear what you're saying. What, what, what would your response be to somebody in one of these countries that says, but oh, hold on a second, you've already got a nationalist government. Mm -hmm. Why can't they do all this stuff that you want to see happen? Uh, well, I do tell them that it's a Westminster construct. The Scottish Parliament is a Westminster construct. Let nobody forget that. Um, they hold all the strings. They decide what kind of powers we get. Um, for goodness sake, they gave us um, in the Smith Commission, I think it was um, air guns, you know, on the Calvin Commission. Road signs. You know, I tell people this in my show. I say, we, we, we can't we can't affect change because we don't have the powers. We don't have, and where in every, any other parliament would you have somebody like Anna Sauber putting his own country down, the Tories in the parliament putting their own country down? And people are amazed at this because in their parliaments, um, the, the, the Nova Scotian ALMs, they all work together to find solutions. 
not in Scotland. There's too much constitutional lines being drawn. And you know what? Some people don't care about um, the way Scotland's being governed. Some people just want there to climb the greasy pole to get an airmine cloak. Um, and us at the bottom are looking at that and going, nah, come on, we've got to affect that change. We've got to stand, do something to uh, affect that. And whoever say, to me says, ah, oh, you can't do it. I'll just give you this quote from a guy in Canada. He says, one wasp will never chase away a bear, but see a swarm of them you'll never see that bear again. And that's what we need to do. We need to get together collectively as a country at a grassroots level and demand more from our politics. There's no shame in that, John. Absolutely no not. And, you know, it's a lot of blame. But the question I keep coming back to is, okay, but you've already got a structure. You've already got a political party. We don't. Well, you, you, with respect, you have the Scottish National Party, which everyone tells me is a nationalist party. Yeah, so that, that, that party is there. It's been in power for quite some time. I, mm -hmm. I think it's a reasonable question for somebody, particularly outside these islands, to put, which is, you've already got everything you say you need, and yet you're no further forward. Why is that? Because we don't, you know as well as I do, John, we don't have the powers um, for the SNP to handle all the big, huge issues that we've got today, the climate change. Well, 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 why don't you ask them to get the powers then? Why do you have to do it? Well, we don't. It's not. That's not what we're about. It's not about getting powers. It's about saying, look, look what we are. Look where we are. We're visible now. We're got, we want change. And do you know what? The more people we're getting bored in this, the more people will go, do you know what? I've got an idea. And I've got an idea. And I've got an idea. And I've got a better idea. And do you know what? Before you know it, people are getting up at up to. And that's what we should be. We've been too subservient. John. We've been too deferential to the politics. We need to stand up and go, you know what? I'm not standing for this anymore. I'm okay. 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 That, that's been very helpful. Bill, can I, can we, we've had some questions. Can I put the, oh, the, yep, the first question to you? Uh, Jay is asking, how do we deal with a media which is 95% hostile to independence and close and closes ranks at the mere suggestion of, of impropriety? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, we're doing our wee bit here at Caledon Radio, I've got to say. Um, I think that's what people have to do. I think they have to get on social media, um, do things like this, um, broadcast a positive message about Scotland every single day. We have to refute some of the arguments coming from uh, the BBC. Even the, the way the BBC interview uh, SNP politicians with aggression and um, boilerplate um, Anna Sarber through his questions. Um, we turn it on its head at Caledon Radio. We say, look, that guy went round in circles. He didn't answer a single question that he was asked. He doesn't know where he's going to get money from, from the Scottish government to affect these changes that he's wanting. Um, yeah. And tell people that. Um, I think we've got to speak together. We've got to um, get away from our telly, switch them off. Don't listen to the, the, um, the, the hostile media. <coughs> it's just the point. The, the, thing, the, thing is, the, the, the bulk of the people who watch and listen to the BBC are people of a certain age. They're, they're predominantly over 55. Young people don't watch television and they don't listen to the radio, except music channels perhaps sometimes. And you'd rather go into a subscription service like Netflix. So well, the bulk of the people, and it's, it, it's, it's not just true in, in Scotland, in Northern Ireland it's the same. The bulk of the people who are in favour of constitutional change tend to be under 55. You know, these, these are the realities of it. Um, a quick question here about, in connection with Northern Ireland. Uh, John McGrotty is asking, some in the independence movement, not me, he adds, would say that you're leading us down the Northern Ireland road. What would you say to them? Can I, can I come in there, John? Please go. That, that, that is a serious, a very serious accusation to make. It's absolute nonsense. Scotland, has absolutely nothing to do with the civil rights movement in Scotland has absolutely nothing to do with the Northern Ireland situation. I want to nail that one right away. We are based along the lines of Martin Luther King's American civil rights movement. The civil rights movement in Northern Ireland was a just movement because people didn't weren't being allowed to vote. They were losing their they weren't allowed houses. The, the whole system was corrupt. In some ways, it's mirroring it mirrored what, uh, what we're experiencing here in Scotland, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's nothing, absolutely nothing to do. Ireland's a, a separate country in its own. So this is, we're trying to achieve that for Scotland. That is all. So if somebody, if somebody in Ireland said, I applaud what you're doing and I'd like to 
have some sort of fraternal connection, you would you would not allow that. You would not. Oh no, that. That, that the actual opposite, John. In fact, someone contacted me today from Catalonia, a chap who is half Catalonian. This is his words: half Catalonian, half Scottish, and he was very interested. And he actually came up with some great links to what the Catalonian movement are doing, and they're approaching Europe. They're actually approaching Europe through different channels. And, and I said to him, I really appreciated his email and. We're going to listen to what he's got to uh, say and take advice from Catalonia and the Catalonian people who are, who are trying to establish their own country. So, you know, there are parallels all over the world here. Yes. It doesn't have to be. Uh, we cannot. I would not reject Ireland. I would not reject Catalonia. I would not reject the Basques. But we are Scottish first and foremost, and we will take advice and help from all corners of the world. Okay. Let me ask you a question, Nori. Uh, thanks very much, Bill. Um, are Scottish civil rights different to other rights from other in other countries? Um, the basic tenets of uh, civil rights um, are there, but for Scotland, we have to we we can create a bespoke civil rights movement. It doesn't have to be copied or cut and pasted from somewhere else. As I said to uh, earlier on, this capitalist modernity is driving the politics of our country today. We've got to fight against that and get a, a more socialist um, um, modernity, if you like, put put in place so that everybody's included. No one's left behind. There is a safety net for those um, frail and un, unable to help themselves, John, um, and. In this, it, and we're talking about different eras as well. We're coming up to an era of um, heavy media influence. Um, and we've got to, somebody said, what, 95% hostile. We've got to switch off the telly. And you were saying earlier, but all the old people still watch it. Mm. Sorry, but they don't. And here's another thing um, where we're on this, our civil rights. Why don't we demand that broadcasting gets devolved? Why is it we have to put up English football in a, and it's not even our team? You know what I mean? Why do we have to pay subscriptions um, for to see Scotland play football or rugby? Um, it's absolutely scandalous. Um, so the civil rights movement will take these um, um, uh, um, anomalies, let's call them, and, and push them to people and say, do you know what this? There's something we can do about this. Okay, okay. I mean, I think a lot of people watching and listening will probably be uh, applauding you on that one too. <laughs> Question for you, Bill. Yeah. Um, we started off by saying this 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 movement, the Scottish civil rights uh, movement, is is predicated upon addressing a need for greater democracy. Uh, what what is your democracy within SCRM? I mean, do you have a constitution? Do you have office bearers? How does it work? We have no constitution. We have no office bearers. We have Nori, myself, uh, and a few others interested parties. Uh, as I said earlier, this is a, a movement in its early days. We don't know how long it's going to have to, to last. It could last for uh, six months, a year, two years, five, who knows? But the, in, the basic, as Dori said, the basic tenet of the movement, if you like, is democracy. It's, it's quite simple, really. All we want is the opportunity to vote on our own country's future. Absolutely. I think if people. But, but, but it, it's a fair question, Bill. If you believe in democracy, Mm -hmm. Presumably, the organisation that you're a part of would need to be seen to be entirely democratic itself. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, so the, if, so it's, if, it's a reasonable question as to yeah, you, yeah who's in no, charge? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 absolutely. Uh, um, and if needs be, we will form a constitution. We will form a, uh, an organisation committee, uh, democratically elected by members. People, people have been asking me for well. Last few weeks now, since it was we launched in Norris uh, Norris radio station, uh, how can I join? How can I subscribe? Mm -hmm. And my answer so far has been, you're using the avatar, the logo, and your biopic on Twitter. You are already joined. You are already uh, a member, if you like. Whether well, let, me, let me tell you a danger. If you haven't yeah. already seen it. There's a big danger in, in simply allowing people to use your, your branding. Mm -hmm. Well, I can come in there and tell you only yesterday, uh, a friend, if you like, a Twitter friend, told me, uh, DM me to say that someone, some clever person on the unionist side, had changed the, the wording on the logo yes. uh, to a unionist. So, yeah, we're aware of what, I'm certainly aware of how 
dirty uh, tricks are operate. In the, yeah, because in the, you know that any any emergent movement has to be very very aware mm -hmm. of entryism. Uh, Absolutely. And, I, I I remember I was the first chair of the Independence Commission many many years ago, and we had representatives from the SNP, the Greens, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And we met for committee meetings, and we were having a committee meeting one day, and thirty people came into the room, complete strangers, wow. and said, uh, "We propose a vote of no confidence in the chair, mm -hmm. and we want the constitution amended." And I said, who are you? And they said, we're from some Trotsky movement in Glasgow, and we've read your constitution, and it allows us to do this. Uh, uh, I think, we, we, anyway, yeah. somebody, somebody, somebody underlined a, a clause in our constitution, which thankfully required any such motion uh, to, be, uh, to be minuted and tabled uh, one month in advance. So I had to regretfully turn down a very considerable effort <laughs> and I tell them that they couldn't do that at this moment in time, but I'd be more than happy to take on board the fact that they wished for the committee uh, to be removed and the chair to be removed. And uh, they went away and never came back. But that was a little danger. And, yep. and we were saved by the fact that we had a constitution and we, abide, we were always, always it, it planned to abide by the constitution, but uh, I just say that because th that's one of the difficulties and challenges when you set up any organisation. You leave yourself to some degree because you have limited resources. Yeah, you you, you 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 try to do your best, and you assume that everyone is like-minded, but sometimes people just ain't. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I saw that in my own union uh, many years ago, John. Uh, we set up a an organisation to stimulate, if you like, the EIS into some sort of action. And exactly the same thing happened. The trots come in one night to, uh, to a meeting we had. Uh, so they actually scuppered it because we weren't experienced enough at that time, you know. So I take on board what you're saying about that, yeah. Can, can, uh, the, 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 there'll be a lot of people watching and listening tonight be saying to themselves, you know something, I've been hugely impressed by Bill and Norrie, <laughs> and I, I want to do something about this. I want to do it now. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what do they need to do? What, what's the first step they need to take? I, I think... Um, uh, I'll go first, Bill, on this one. I think no we, worries, yep. we need to get um, a, a new web-based platform um, uh, so that people can contact us and see what our aims are and how who we're going to be um, having our meetings and who we're going to get as a, a board, if we have a board. Um, we'll have to uh, attract people to work at the top and the bottom of the organisation. Uh, I prefer to work at the bottom, where I am now. Um, trying to drum up support and get, um, uh, but there's got to be a connect, John, between those at the bottom and those representing at the board level. Sure. Um, and I think that's what we're missing just now. That connect. There's a disconnect between what we want and what we get. Yes. So, if we can get, um, you know, I'm not sure in, in terms of numbers uh, how it works, um, but we, if we don't start now, we'll never do anything. We'll be sitting in our hands wishing and wanting and thinking and maybeing if we're going to do something let's get together and uh, because do you know what if we don't start doing it now um you know given the world situation um how, we can't wait any longer we just yeah. can't and it'd be madness to wait any longer to start something yeah and i know people are going to throw brick bats at us and go ah, you're doomed for failure you can't do it and all the rest of it <laughs> Uh, this is Scotland, you know what I mean? That's what we, that's what happens. But we'll show them that we can. This is the other part, side of Scotland that we want to show that we yeah. can. I, well, I, th I think I think there's no question that you know we, we, if you if you start up any movement, there's always a cast of thousands who will say, uh, a uh, it's the wrong time, b you're the wrong people, c there's nobody interested, and mm -hmm. d it's not something I would support. Uh, but that's that's just. It, I don't think that's particularly Scottish, by the way. I think that's just a, a, a universal law that you see at, at work there. Well, I think we, you've got a point because I think people are really um, being negative is the easiest thing to do. To be positive, if you've got to get off your chair and do something, um, people will um, um, sit back and let others do it. That's fine. But I tell you what, as your kids go to bed with a uh, hungry belly, uh, when you can't afford to put the heating on. 
at some point you're going to have to come out and say your piece. And yeah, you know right. what? You'll have a receptive ear, Ross. I, I think I think in many respects you, your timing couldn't be more apposite. Uh, but that's a personal view. Can I just add that we'd be running a poll during the show, and we asked people watching and listening tonight, should Scotland be an independent country? These are the results. 97% said yes. <laughs> and 3%, uh, 23 people said no. Who are these people, 3%? Who are well, they? The, the, the whole point of, of the TNT show it, it, it is not to be uh, uh, in any way closed off. No. We, we want to encourage people who have abs either A, no particular interest in independence, B, no interest in politics, uh, or C, uh, are completely opposed to the whole idea of uh, a change of, in the Constitution. Yeah. And I think it's terrific, I have to say, uh, that, that you know 3% of those in the audience say, look, I, I'm opposed to independence. I think that's great. I, if, it, if it was 13, I'd feel even happier. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it seems to me, that, you know, that, 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 that there's a limit to preaching to the choir. There really is. Yes, that's uh, right. And, and you, you, you need to be speaking to the whole congregation and not just to the choir. So, mm -hmm. so right now we have a poll running which says, are, are you interested in the Scottish civil rights movement? And hopefully before we close the show in about nine minutes time, uh, we'll be able to get the results of that, which I think would be interesting, I suspect. I think what, if I can come in here, John, I think what we, we really want to do, it's a bit like Mick Lynch and his uh, RMT union inspires a lot of people to get off their backsides and do things. Um, talk, it can be cheap, but talk can be powerful as well. And actions uh, are, are much more powerful than words. If we can affect change um, just by being a movement uh, and having people at the top who can, um, you know, have got more, more um, skill than I have of organising these things. Uh, I'm quite happy to be at the bottom, feeding to the top, um, but as long as I'm feeding to the top. And I think um, people in England will be looking up at us and going, do you know what? I want a bit of that. I want that. Our, our rivers have been polluted. There's nothing I can do. There's no regulation here. I want what they've got. And we can be an inspiration to people. Yeah. And that's why we're taking out of it. Yeah. Well, that, 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 it would be fascinating if a whole chunk of your membership actually came from outside Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, stranger things have happened. Um, I told you about the listening figures for Caledon Radio. Um, we get more from uh, Canada and Argentina than we do from Scotland sometimes. It's amazing. But that's well, it, it's, it's not too amazing when you think of the number of uh, people in Canada who, whose origins stem from Scotland. Uh, and that, as far as Argentina is concerned, my experience of being there is that they're pretty open to the whole yeah. idea of, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and we all know that, and this may be a myth, that that's part of some various football competitions. A whole bunch of Scots went over there and never returned. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. It's and, true. And I, I, I true. can't help but be reminded of that fact when I watch uh, Premier League football. And there's yeah. a guy playing, I think, for Brighton who rejoices in, in the name of McAllister. And I think he's either Argentine yeah. or European. Yes. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I forgot about him. I think I can touch with him and see if he wants to come on the show. <laughs> well, that, that would be that would be a good idea. Maybe, maybe somebody in the uh, Scottish FA ought to be in touch as well and see if he wants to uh -huh. uh, cease Please being uh, uh, affiliated to Argentina <laughs> and maybe want to represent Scotland. Who knows? Uh, I think all of that stuff would be a step in the right direction. Look, we've got roughly four or five minutes to go. Uh, are there any thoughts or views or comments that you feel that would have been helpful to have addressed earlier and we haven't done so? Start off with you, Bill. If yeah, I so one of the things you mentioned earlier was this um, once in a generation thing. And I, I see a role for the, the Scottish civil rights movement in destroying British propaganda, like once in a generation, because it's not on the agreement. It was a throwaway comment, I think, by Alex Salmond and possibly Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, but the, the British establishment have used that as a weapon. They weaponized that tiny phrase as a, a weapon against the independence movement. So I, I see one of the roles has been to, um, if you like, combat 
And Murray does it very effectively every day when Caledon Review combat the British propaganda because you're right, 95% of, or somebody said, 95% of the media are anti independence. And that's a huge uh, hurdle to get over, you know. But as far as the movement itself is concerned, I think there's a thirst and there is certainly a need for it because if we don't do something, Norris bang on, if we don't do something now, we might, in fact, lose our country. The way things are moving, and with this internal market bill and all the rest of it, they are out to destroy the Scottish Parliament, let's be honest, and anglicise Scotland. Norrie? Well, John, I just think if we succeed in expanding um, democratic politics and everyday life um, through alliances that we just said, um, let's bring the unions and the councils and academies anywhere and get the huge political power of society um, energised, I think we could solve a lot more problems than you think. I think we could get people's uh, heartfelt issues to the top of the agenda. It's no po There's no point in listening to Keir Starmer saying, oh, I'll give you a thousand pounds windfall tax and that'll help you through this uh, crisis. What about after that, mate? What about after that? And what about after that? There's nothing. It's always for the here and now to get you through a political um, yeah. episode. Um, you know, through the expansion of um, democratic politics and the, de the development of de more democracy, everybody will succeed except for those who've got most to lose, and that's the, the fat cap businessmen. But do you know who's losing right now? I don't have to tell you. It's us on the ground. We need to change yeah. that, John. We need to change yeah, that. I, yeah, I mean, there's no question life is going to get very, very difficult for millions of people uh, as we head towards winter. Uh, oh, we've got, the, we've got the results of the poll. Remember the question that was put was, are you interested in the Scottish civil rights movement? Mm -hmm. Now, since the people can... Uh, who uh, responded to the poll I've been uh, watching and listening to you tonight, it's really your views that they are either espousing or not. So you might be interested to know that 89% said yes to that. <laughs> That's pretty good. And 11% said no. Um, I'm shocked at that. I thought I, th I thought it'd be 50, 50-50. Uh, I, I just because it's new, and people don't know about it. I'm absolutely astounded um, that people have um, bought into what we're trying to achieve here. Um, sure. Moving, I, and we don't. It's not a utopia we're after, John. It's not radical. It's just um, things that we need to to stay alive. Most of us live from zero to seventy, and if we're lucky, any time over that, then we're gone for that period. We want to have the best life from cradle to grave that we can get. And a lot of us ain't getting it. And you know what? What disturbs me most in my mailbag, um, I get people telling me they're going to commit suicide. I get people saying they can't afford to feed their kids. I go to bed with that. I go to bed with all this stuff. I, I, that's what brings me to the, the, the TNT show. It's not because I want my face on the telly. It's not because I want um, some glamour. I'm sick fed up in my fellow citizens um, being hammered this way. And we really need to get our voices heard, and that's the end of it for me. Okay. Well, lots of people seem to agree with you. Bill, do you have any last comments before we close? Just on that poll, uh, John, um, I, just, I just said that I believe there's a thirst and a need for it, and I think that 89% interested uh, vote, I'm with Nori, I'm pretty astounded, but yeah, a thirst and a need for a civil rights movement in Scotland, most definitely. Well, I don't think you should be too surprised because you've both been very eloquent tonight and I thank you most sincerely. Thank okay, you. Well, I'm afraid we have to bring it to an end, folks. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. It looks by the results of the poll that you have. Uh, enjoyed listening to Nori and Bill as much as I have. It's been educational and informative. Uh, now, uh, thank you to both of them. And I just thought a quick reminder that last week's uh, Sunday National column by Elliot Bilmo was a big hit with many of you. Uh, do look out for my column in the Sunday National this weekend. I'm not sure I can reach the heights that Elliot did last week, but we'll try our best. Uh, and by the way, joining us next week at the same time, uh, we'll be talking to novelist uh, Emma Gray. I just want to remind you that Liz Trust has condemned British workers for a lack of graft, as she put it. There's no way you could accuse the Tories of lacking the ability to be grafting, <laughs> particularly on, on corruption. Thanks again for joining us. Stay safe and take care of each other. See you all next week. Good night. Bye for now.